Hey guys, I'm Jane Dupree, and today I'm showing you how to make these corner pocket bank shots uh, with high accuracy. So there's a couple of things you need to understand about bank shots first. One is you need to focus on the speed that you're hitting a ball. Uh, let's say I put this cue ball at the second diamond, one diamond up, and this ball is a little bit slanted and through the cue ball, the ball goes to that half diamond. So if I aim straight there with really hard speed, really fast, the ball goes to right here. So let's mark that real quick and went to right there. So now I'm gonna set up the same exact layout and now I'm gonna hit it slow. Watch what happens to the ball. See how much further over it goes? Now it was on track to hit here. So this is almost a whole diamond apart. It was almost a whole diamond apart from where it was when we hit it fast. So obviously now you see the faster you hit it, the shorter the rebound angle. Uh, one trick you can use, this is a physics law. It is 100% proven. If you follow this exactly, you're guaranteed to make the bank shot every time. Uh, if your measurements are correct. The same angle a ball goes into the rail is the same angle it will come out. Same angle of incidence equals same angle of reflection. So this will work if you're hitting center ball or center low, center high, and you're hitting at that medium pace. Just by medium pace, I just mean like like that. So that was that's, that's about the pace that we can hit. Maybe a little softer, maybe a little slower. We'll still be fine. But with that fast speed, just know that it'll shorten the angle. So what we're going to do is find the point where the ball goes into the rail. The angle you want the ball to go into the rail is the angle that will come out of the rail. So if my calculations are 100% correct, which they probably are not, we should make the ball if we aim about right here on this rail. If we hit it fast right here on this rail, we're going to come up short. If we hit it slow, we're going to come up long or maybe just roll into the pocket off of this rail if that's even possible uh, with my rails. <laughs> my rails aren't very good. So, same angle of incidence is same angle of reflection. If you're a kid, ask your math teacher, ask your college professor. Uh, you probably have heard of this physics law. Also another thing, spin. So I'm going to hit this ball straight into the rail. And it should just come straight back, hit the cue ball like that. Now, whatever spin is put on this cue ball, the opposite spin is transferred to the object ball. So if left spin is on this cue ball, the object ball has right spin, which will bring it more to the right. So left spin on the cue ball equals right spin on the object ball. And spin on the object ball is at its highest when we're using a little bit of backspin and a little bit of that side spin. So we're going to hit just a, about right here, down here. Uh, more spin on the cue ball does not mean more spin on the object ball. Let's just clarify that real quick. That does not mean more spin on the object ball. So now if I hit it straight, again with that left spin, it goes more over and the cue ball avoids it. So we can use that to avoid double kiss, avoid the double kiss um, and all of that good position stuff. Now the same thing if we put right spin on the cue ball, that'll put left spin on our object ball. If we hit it straight, it's going to go more to the left. So these are just basic physics rules that you need to know. When a ball is spinning into the rail, going left, it's going to come back left. So you have to Think about what spin you're using on the cue ball. So now, I'm just going to show a couple of various clips of me measuring out the angles and pocketing the ball.
Now, when you need to hit the ball harder than usual, harder than that medium pace, what we're going to do, we're going to still find the angle of incidence is the angle of reflection. We're still going to find that line. But since we know it's going to come out at a shorter angle, we're going to move our aiming point up. We're moving it up. Because of that speed taking it shorter, uh, we need to move our aiming point up to compensate for that. So move it up as much as you think it is. You're kind of going to have to make that depend on what table you're on. Because all tables are different. I can't tell you an exact measurement. I wish I could. Uh, but your table, your felt, your balls, they're all different. So your playing conditions are different. Just saying angle of incidence equals angle of reflection will remain the same for all tables because that is a law of physics. It's not just a theory. It's not a theorem. It's a law. So that works 100% of the time. It's been tested multiple times. So you know that will work if you're using no spin at that medium pace. So if you are need to shoot faster, or shorten the angle, so aim up here. If you're shooting slower, you know it'll widen that angle. It'll, yeah, widen that angle. It'll make it go more that way. So you need to put your aim a little more to the left. Uh, so I'm going to show two different shots. The first one is going to be hitting very, very fast. You'll see me measuring it out and uh, lengthening my point on the rail. You'll see me moving it up the rail. And then the second one is going to be slower. So you'll see me move my aiming point back. So here they are. Now, as I showed you that spin, where the ball, the opposite spin on the cue ball puts, the spin on the cue ball puts the opposite spin on the object ball, when, you also have to compensate for that. So you have to adjust your aim when you're using left and right spin. Top spin and back spin shouldn't matter, but as I showed you, when I hit that ball straight into the rail with left spin, it came out more to the right. When I hit the cue ball with right spin, it came out more to the left. So if we were trying to bank this with uh, using left spin on the cue ball, which puts right spin on the object ball. Like that slow shot, we're going to have to measure out our same angle of incidence equals same angle of reflection, and then we're going to have to move it back this way. Because of that left spin putting that right spin on the object ball, when that ball goes straight to the rail with right spin, look how it moves to that right side, so we need to kind of adjust our angle for that. You would have to adjust it even more if you were hitting slow with left spin on your cue ball. I uh, hope I'm making sense right now, uh, but I'm explaining this the best I can. So if you're using right spin on a cue ball, which puts left spin on the object ball, which sends it back the opposite way, we would have to move our aiming point down. And if we were hitting fast, we'd have to move it further down because that further shortens the angle. Uh, so hopefully this is making, hopefully this is clear. I'm trying to make it as clear as I can, but it is complicated. There's a lot of things you need to take you need to take account of in your mind. Am I hitting it slow? Am I hitting it fast? Am I hitting it at that medium speed? Am I hitting with left spin, right spin, uh, center? Where do I need to adjust? So like that last one, I'm going to show you two different uh, variations. One, I'm the first one I'm going to use right spin on my cue ball which equals left spin on the object ball. That's the one we have to uh, move the angle down this way. And the other one will be uh, left spin on the object ball, which puts right spin on, left spin on the cue ball, puts right spin on the object ball. That's the one we have to move our angle up because of that widening. So here they are.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, click that like button down below. If you want to be notified when I post again, you can click the subscribe button and then the bell icon right next to it. That'll just send you an email and a notification saying that I've uploaded a new video. If you guys are interested in this IQ training ball, this is a great tool for repetition in your game. Uh, it's the most important part of pool, the repetition and the mu muscle memory. You being able to get down on that shot and act like you've been there for your entire life. So this is a great tool to just practice your repetition. Uh, so I highly request, I highly suggest you get one of these. You can get one for twenty or twenty-five dollars. I'm not sure which one it is. It's around there uh, at iqclinic.com. That's i c u e c l i n i c dot com. Great, great, great tool, and I love playing with it. Obviously, I use it in every one of my videos. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.